Listen. Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat, the Switch one year anniversary. My name is Philip Mewson, and today I'm joined by Pear Schneider, <laughs> Zach Ryan, and <laughs> Brian Altano. I didn't have, I don't have the noise. Today. Birthday. <laughs> happy happy birthday. birthday, Switch. Yeah, happy oh birthday, my gosh. Switch. It's been a whole year, guys. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? I, yes. Are you I, excited? I want to talk about this cake real quick. It's beautiful. It Great job. Quick. Yes. Did you put those, you put, did you put paper on it? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's paper, but it's Mario and Zelda and just a bunch of Nintendo themed characters. Yeah. So I think so it's I just, appropriate. I just want to show everybody that this is a real life, real Oh, a it's real a real cake. cake. This yeah. is a you legit cake and we are going to enjoy it right after I like the like, cutouts are just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> It tastes like, um, uh, uh, what are, the, what are those little Valentine candies, the little chalky ones? Oh yeah, oh, the, 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 the uh, heart sweet things. Or... Sweet, sweet hearts? Oh yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sucks. So the cool. Switch is one? The Switch is officially one year old. And now. more importantly, the fiscal year is almost over. The most joyous time. Exactly. That's right. For gamers all over the world, the end of the fiscal year. Exactly. So I thought we could take this opportunity and just kind of take a look back at the first year of Switch and see how it all went. Um, and what better place to start than the beginning, right? That's where most things start. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Should we launch or announcement? Uh, this is the reveal trailer. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to talk about yeah, October so 2016, right? Let's, let's take a look at the first time we actually saw the Switch in action now. So they, they got this part right, right off the bat. There was many, many hours at the launch of this console where I sat alone in a room in the dark. And played Zelda? And played Zelda. Yeah. yeah. And, while, my, while people that are, people or animals that love me uh, I also, for attention and yes, I, ignored I also needed to be convinced to uh, uh, fulfill my just human obligations of taking care of friends and loved ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so, by the way, when we saw this, there was a lot of speculation. Is this real? Is this simulated? Yeah. Is it really that quick when you take the switch out I, of the door? Right. I think I think that, that the the. We're getting. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I think that that one of the things that was so impressive about when the Switch finally launched was like how often, just in conversation, was like you can really do that. Like, yeah. All these examples. It was really funny because in the initial viewing of this trailer or whatever, uh, everybody's like, "I'm never gonna play it on a plane like that. Look at that kickstand. Yeah. That's that ain't gonna work." And uh, I've literally done every single one of these things. I did so, all this. Like I did yeah. the Skyrim thing a couple months ago, and I just beat the hell out of this family of people living in a house in that game. And like a bunch of people behind me on the plane were like, "What's wrong with that?" Did man? you take the Joy-Con off? Like I'm, I, I don't often take the Joy-Con off in the plane because I, I do want actually, maximum battery. So I actually I will bring a pro controller or um, you know like the the grip onto a plane mm -hmm. and then. So I can kind of lean back in the chair and have yep. this, yeah, I have the whole setup, man. And then right. the other thing here was like, what? Elder Scrolls and Bethesda? Yeah, yeah we started seeing some, deal, right? some third parties in there, so and, it... And this this still has materialized, right? That weird car... Right, we never thingy. we never got a chance to actually see that, so... Mm -hmm. uh, as a guy that used to uh, play as a touring musician professionally, uh, I never have seen Mario Kart played in a uh, situation like that. No. But I wish that it had been the case when I was right. still playing music. Yeah, I think that van specifically is the only van in the world that has that Nintendo Switch docking station to hold on to. It, may, it might just screen. be built into that van. I think so. There's our yeah. friend Karen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Karen making a triumphant return. That was, so wait, that was a really important, uh, in that reveal trailer, there she is. She's, I guess, important too, but uh, <laughs> that that moment caused the most stir about the Switch's launch, I think, uh, or the and Switch's announcement. Mario? Yeah, what? because it was like, what was that? Yeah. What was that Mario? Where is he? What's is he right. doing? Oh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, and this was long before we'd ever gotten word that there was a Mario in development or or confirmed to be on on this next platform. So it was really exciting to see even just two seconds of whatever the next Mario and, would be. And then I remember we were instantly suspicious and said, that looks too good to be true. I bet it's an on-rails jumping game, like mm -hmm. a Mario run style in 3D. Luckily, that's not what happened. And it, it was, was also a it was fantastic one, game. One of the omen, only moments of 2017 were like, there it is. somebody like Karen rose to this like zeitgeist popularity <laughs> and then didn't turn out to be like racist or horrible afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, oh, she's great. She went to that party and everyone was like, yeah, she's just a normal actress in real but, life. But this looked so stupid. Come on, like this whole sequence, we made fun of it because it was so unlikely that you would walk out of your apartment with this thing and then go over there and keep playing. Yeah. So, and then it happens. And then we all do it. The, Look how often it happens. One it's of crazy. My, one of my favorite things uh, was everybody was clowning on Karen for taking her switch to a, uh, an adult party. And not like a like swingers party or whatever, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And uh, the, the idea that somebody would just take their switch and just be there playing a video game in the midst of all these people. And then 
cut to March of 2017 uh, at Jonathan Dornbush's birthday, and somebody posted like a group photo of all of us, like, oh, happy birthday, yeah. Jonathan. And then there in the corner, in the background, is Alana playing Zelda on Switch, <laughs> and everybody's like, it's her, it's Karen in real yep. life. Yep. So, all right, so we talked a little bit about like what the Switch, or how it surprised us, and, and what we were really excited about. But after this reveal trailer, we still had a lot of questions. Mm obviously, mm. but I want to know, like, just from what we saw out of the reveal trailer itself, were there any sort of disappointments, or like, w were you expecting more from Nintendo, something different? I, or? Had, I had doubts, obviously. Right. I had doubts and fears were the number one. I, I, I thought, okay, this thing, this thing is going to get incredibly hot. It's going to die after 90 minutes. Um, the, we, the resolution's gonna be terrible. I mean, think of every portable screen we'd ever gotten from Nintendo before that point was pretty subpar, you know? Yeah. Like, even the Wii U, like, the reds were really pixelated oh, yeah. and blown out. Um, 3DS, uh, just not a great looking screen. Ne they've never done a multi-touch um, multi screen before. There are all these little questions where I'm like, I don't know how this is gonna pan out. And all of those things were totally fine. Like, cool. it just, they all got the job done, so. Same yeah. reactions to the hardware, you know, I, like, I first, I love the graphic, I love the name, I love the kind of the snap, like, they instantly created this meme and this recognizable, like, sound effect for the system. I loved all that, I was worried a little bit about the hardware, and then the reveal of the third-party games, which were all ports. So yeah. I was like, oh God, is this gonna be port central machine? In hindsight, obviously they were trying to tell a story that this is not a game to play just Tetris and Picross, right? Like yeah. this is a machine where you play a giant game like Skyrim. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I appreciate that in hindsight, but there there were still some worries about it being all ports. Yeah, I, think and we, we, yeah, I was gonna say, we mentioned this before, but there's there are no children in this That's entire what I was trailer, say. right? Yeah. Like this is all, these are all games that are Mo not like ad adult oriented, but I mean, it's it's a lot of like uh, sort of, there's a lot of T-rated games, there's some M-rated games, there's a bunch of games that people are playing in like a party setting and more yep. adult setting, so. Right, they had, they were showing the right games, I feel like. I yeah. feel like, yeah, that was a big, huge attraction point. And obviously, uh, when it comes to marketing the Switch, it was, in my opinion, genius. It was mm -hmm. very, very well done, especially when you compare it to how they showed off and revealed their last console, the Wii U, right? Yep. Um, I mean, everything was very clear in, in, in these commercials. Like, we knew what the console was, we knew it was a direct um, next obvious, like, Nintendo console, and we knew it was a hybrid system as well. The other thing, too, is that every every game in this trailer has been released. Uh, I had the, mm -hmm. you probably remember this pair, but I had the Nintendo GameCube uh, launch box, uh -huh. and when you spun it around, there were all these games that never actually came out. There was like PlayStation a, as well, like every yeah, system yeah. had that, like right? Cameo yeah. Elements of Power, which ended up being uh, what was like a 360 launch game, yeah. and yeah. then um, there was some sort of Donkey Kong platforming game or Donkey Kong Racing yeah. that just got straight up canceled. Um, and there was that weird Miyamoto quote, like, yeah, it's yeah. pretty awesome. But oh, it's good. They like delivered they, here. I, so the question is, did they deliver on what they promised in the trailer? Yeah, weirdly. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, everything they yeah. showed actually works in the real world and it's a machine that we all like. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, Nintendo. But speaking of their marketing um, aspect, obviously we saw they did a fantastic job sending the message of the Switch and conveying it and as to what it is. And I, I honestly want to just take a look at the first year sales of the Switch and compare it to other consoles and how they did. So let's go ahead and pull a graph for that. I believe we do have some numbers to take a look at because the Switch is, of course, Damn. the fastest selling console in the United States. Um, so if you take a look at the graph right now, we can see that the Switch <laughs> is... Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Uh, it's, right now, these numbers are as of last month, uh, so these aren't the final numbers, but it's probably well over uh, 15 million at this point, the Switch mm -hmm. itself. And then right next to that, you can see the Wii. These are all first year sales. Uh, the Wii had 13.7 million, PS4 13.5, and then obviously Xbox One 7, Xbox 365.9. So you can see like a, a sort of pattern here. The Switch is a very, very successful console. Oh, at the least Wii U. In its Where's current the Wii U? State. Oh, we don't, yeah, oh. we, don't, we don't want to talk about the Wii well, U right 3. now. Well, 3.9 million <laughs> units from the Wii U. So, you know, instantly just the, dif the difference in machines that are in their utility not that far apart, right? right. Like that like kind of portable screen aspect and all of that and the types of games that we see on these machines. But the Switch clearly telling a story why you should own it, what it can do that the Wii U never did. I, I feel like the, the mission statement for the Switch from day one just made so much more sense. Yep. The Wii U was never truly able to capitalize on what it was supposed to be. Especially coming after the Wii, it was like, well, what is this? Do I use my old controllers for it? Do I use my new ones? The answer is yes. To <laughs> sort of, maybe. Yeah. And with this, this was so clearly defined as like, this is a new movement for us, this is yep. a new platform. 
Um, it's, it's got new games and old games, um, and it, it totally delivered, and I love it for that. That's, so the, the only caveat on, in that whole story is that the Switch is closest to something like the DS. Right. You know, out of all the consoles that are being shown and compared, the Switch is this true hybrid that could also be um, pegged as a, as, a, as a handheld, right? And, and so that's where I feel like it's not apples to apples, compare, like comparing this machine to the PlayStation 4, which, which has much more limited utility. It's a home console, you keep it at home. Um, but I mean, obviously the Switch does both and does both well, and so... I think that's a really good point, because if fair. you look historically at Nintendo consoles, they're sort of neck and neck uh, in competing with themselves, right? Like mm -hmm. you, would you would have to say a lot, and we, we still say it a little bit with stuff like Metroid, where like a game comes out and you're like, why isn't this on Switch? And for the mm -hmm. longest time during the GameCube era, the Wii era, they had very dominant handhelds at the same time. And for years on NVC, we've been kind of begging, hey, like merge these two lines, make them into one sort of cohesive conversation. And I think they're finally getting there, although there's still millions of 3DSs out there. So. I think true. Pokemon will be the first example of that. Right. right? I was going to say, looking at those numbers without like a real big casual hit like uh, Animal Crossing or Pokemon, um, that's just going to keep... I, I don't even know where that's going to go. Because that's pretty much all like hardcore gamers and some casuals right now. Yeah. And let's not forget, too, that the Switch launched in March. It yeah. wasn't even a holiday launch. I mean, the holiday was at the end of that year. The Switch launched at the beginning of the year. So without that holiday push, it was still the fastest selling console in which, U.S. history, which, which is, is crazy. Which is really cool because they got to benefit from all of the sort of like, you know, the, the big celebration that happens like financially around the holidays every single year. Um, yeah while still gaining eight, nine months of traction before that. And avoiding the shortage at Christmas, yeah, right? Yeah, I think they had worked out a whole bunch of nonsense too. Like no one was even having the conversation by November that the left Joy-Con wasn't working or like, yeah. you know, little, little things like that. That's like, true. All I that stuff got out of the way in March. You know, we all sort of beta tested it for a while. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, good, it's a good place to be. Uh, yeah, and I think to Paris' point, I think people were so ready for there to be uh, no Switches to be found anywhere during the holiday season. Uh, just given that that's how Nintendo has been the last mm -hmm. couple of years with, with systems like that. And uh, I think they did a just a bang-up job of upping production, like meeting demand, and really cashing in and, and paying, like being able to provide the systems when people wanted them the most. Yep. So I think that was really important for them this mm -hmm. year. Definitely. Yeah. What I've noticed too about the Switch itself is that it almost sparked this like new market or interest for accessories and customizability, almost in the way that like smartphones did when the iPhone came out. Like we had all these crazy cases coming out for Switch. We have different color Joy-Cons, you know. I feel like the customizability of the Switch itself kind of entices people, it gets people excited about it, you know what yeah. I mean? So that I, probably I, helps. I think that conversation is going to continue this year. I think, um, I think we're going to start bigger. to see, yep, mm -hmm. we're yeah. start to see a lot of different custom Joy-Cons. I think we're going to see maybe some classic ones. I mean, I had to like basically customize Super Nintendo ones <laughs> for mine, but I think they'll be selling stuff like that by the end of the yeah. year. Hopefully yeah. like um, GameCube, all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. think each each person here has a set of custom Joy-Cons. Yeah, right? Like we've true. got the white ones on the table here. Some of us yep. even bought every Joy-Con ever made. That's, like, that's did nonsense. That? Who that's nonsense. That? Uh, even like going... Like a house full from, of Joy-Cons, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah, like a whole, house of a thousand Joy-Cons. House of a thousand Just Joy -Cons. six colors. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> in, in each side, and, uh. yeah, got it, okay. <laughs> All right, well, final question before we move on to the next topic. Um, I know there was a lot of controversy initially when we first heard the pricing for Switch. Uh, people were a little off-put by it being $299, $300. Uh, do you guys, now that we have the game, or now that we have the console, and we, we've played it for a long mm -hmm. time, a year, do you feel like the pricing was fair? Do you feel like $300 was a good price? I don't ever actually remember being taken aback or, or oh, really? about the price. Like I, I three hundred dollars from the outset was seemed like right in the sweet spot for me. I oh, think okay. I, I didn't think that it was like overpriced at all. Did oh, you I feel totally, like yes, I totally did. Really? Yeah. I mean there was a lot of conversation in, in the room out there when we were watching the live stream finding out about the price, thinking about how basically the life cycle of the Xbox One and the PS4 at that point had been going on long enough that you can buy those systems for the same price and they are much more powerful and, and you yeah. know and capable and have a much larger library of games they have much more access to third party stuff um, but looking at this as like I only have to buy this I don't have to buy this and the DS right. um, I was able to sort of justify I mean I was going to get it no matter what but uh, yeah I, I think that there was still a little bit of that sort of you know Three hundred dollars feels a little hefty. Yeah, especially mm. again if you compare it to the DS line of systems, right? Well, because and I think a lot of people look at the Switch and they still look at the Switch as 
primarily a handheld console. Right. So it was a little steep for them to jump in yeah. and spend $300 on a handheld when Nintendo still offers another handheld that has a lot of great games already and still apparently had games coming to it for like a fraction of the price. Yeah, right? and, and you can get some models for $79. It's right, true, yeah. exactly. Or yeah, they do like the 2DS for like 59 bucks, and it comes with like two games sometimes. It's yeah, just right. Like, it's crazy. Um, Andrew Goldfarb, who's our news editor here, specifically said that he, he said it from the jump and he's been doing it since, but he was like, I will literally never dock my Switch, this will only be a handheld. Yeah, he's only played Switch handheld yeah. in, in 12 months. Yeah. So if you look at it like that, it's like, yeah, that's a pretty expensive device, but also, I don't know, at that point, now you're competing against phones and iPads, which are hundreds, thousands of dollars at this point, you know? Yeah, like, they're hundreds of thousands of hundreds dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Very expensive machines, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think I think we all settled into it. Like, the, the thing is, the second we walked out into, into the, you know, in, into Hyrule for the first time, it was like, uh, who cares? Right. See, for me, it was holding the system because, mm. like, if you go back now and you hold the Wii U gamepad, yeah. you'll go, oh my god, it's so feels, shiny, yeah. plasticky, light. It, it feels, feels cheap. It feels cheap, right? Yeah. And then the first time we picked up a Switch, just the plastic, the way it's like slightly porous, like yeah. it just feels hefty and different. And like you're like, wow, this is like a piece of consumer electronics. This yeah. is not a toy. It's got it's got a really incredible professional build quality to it that I would say most Nintendo handhelds, or if not all, have lacked for a very long time outside of like a few things. Like I remember getting the GBA SP when I first yeah. picked that up and being like, this is like a nice little piece yeah. of And they all yeah. have like the carnival sparkle paint and stuff yeah. and this one doesn't, right? You're, like you're it, so it right about the Wii U too because yeah. when you pick it up, it, it just feels hollow <laughs> and you're like, this doesn't feel like it has yeah. any power to it and right. it didn't, yeah. you know? Yeah. You don't Tastes know the terrible though. Sparkle paint, do you? I don't know the yeah. Carnival Sparkle paint. It's like the little like self-driving car things. They're all like uh, Carnival Sparkle colors. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah drop yeah. the cap. That sounds fun. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we talked a lot about the console itself, but now I kind of want to get into the games. Okay. So let's talk about some of the best Nintendo Switch games for the first year. Um, so. Let's take a look at the top-selling first-party Switch games for year one. I also have a nice little neat graph that I put together yeah, for you're that. Like graph master, I'm, dude. I'm I'm a numbers guy, so cool. Um, but yeah, so uh, while we get that graph pulled up, uh, obviously Mario Odyssey was the top-selling game globally with nine. 0.07 million, um, and then under that, Mario Kart 8 Delac uh, Deluxe, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Splatoon, and 1-2 Switch. So what's note, uh, noteworthy here is that more than 60% of Switch owners actually have Mario Odyssey, and over 55% have Zelda Breath of the Wild. Those more, are massive attachment more rates. More noteworthy is that 40% of them don't. So like, what? <laughs> what are you playing? What's what going you on? Over there? One, yeah. two Switch fans, man. But <laughs> the, the, the other notable thing is like, everybody has at least two copies of Mario Kart 8 by now. Yeah, I know. Like, look at those sales. More than 7 million units of 8 Deluxe sold for the Switch. Some yeah. of us even bought two copies of Zelda at launch. Remember some, that? Some yeah. of us did, right? Yeah. Exactly. We do such a thing. Such and a I don't want to leave the third parties out of this conversation either. I don't have a fancy graph for that, but I can tell you that the top three third party selling games for Switch this year uh, for the first year of Switch were Kingdom Battle uh, with 1.4 wow. million, mm -hmm. FIFA with 550,000, and Pokin Tournament um, with 1.07 million. And those are just games that got retail box copies, right? Like we actually right. don't have all the numbers on stuff like Stardew Valley, uh, Minecraft, which I imagine um, I, 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 well, I would yeah. guess did hit, like the 750k mark. For some I of see those. Overcooked in the top ten every day. Yeah, like those, yeah. it's gonna add up in the end. It's, I, I, I will guarantee Overcooked Stardew Valley will, will crack a million on Switch yep. digitally, which is incredible. No, it's awesome. But yeah, that's uh, obviously for uh, um, Mario Plus Rabbits. That's it's great. This is now a million selling franchise. Mm -hmm. It obviously has the power of the Mario franchise pushing it, because mm -hmm. I, I don't think Rabbit's games were doing that well in the end anymore. I think right. the biggest um, story out of this too is that Nintendo will probably start trusting third party developers more to sort of open up their portfolio a little well, bit. Certainly this one, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, I, I, I imagine this team will be working on Mario games for a long time, which, you know, they're yeah. probably very happy about. I feel like I, I still meet Switch owners who have not played this game, mm. and it's confounding to me. Like it is a really good game. To I mean, to a casual player, this game must look like some sort of insane. It looks like front game. mission. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Not, even, it's not even that. It's yeah. not even that. It, it's the strategy element that turns people off. I, f I feel like, but it's like if you bought the Switch and because you saw a new Mario game and you loved Mario 64 or Mario Sunshine when you were a kid, to see something like this. 
people hopping around shooting like honey buckets at people and like <laughs> stomping on big rabbits. Like it's weird, man. It's so weird. I think yeah. it's a tough sell to a casual demographic, but it's such an awesome game that and, it, and, and it deserves it's, every every one of those sales. It, it's there. actually not complicated either. It's a very yeah. simple game and it's set up. It's actually pretty forgiving yep. until you hit the, the challenge levels. But yeah, yeah. great success, man. Mm -hmm. Great success. Um, so I want to bring a little bit of attention to probably f uh, some games that we like, some games that we definitely like, but games that you might have missed. So mm. I went around uh, before the show started and I made sure everyone picked a game. So um, I want to start over with Pear and ask you, Pear, what do you, what do you think is an amazing game on Switch that a lot of people may have missed out so on? There, there are, obviously there are a bunch of really obvious games like the Steam Worlds and all that that we've talked about at, at length. Picross S I keep on going back to, yep. but the one, I just played it last night again, yeah. the one the one game that I really um, think is overlooked a bit is Puyo Puyo Tetris. Okay. And mm. so, you know, combining, uh, you know, the classic uh, compile used to make the Puyo Puyo games back in the days, um, uh, you know, uh, combining that, that, that one puzzle game with Tetris and actually having you play asymmetrically against your friends. Like mm -hmm. if you happen to be better at one game than the other, you can, you can choose that. Or you can have the two modes mixed. Or you can have all these crazy party modes that drop junk on you and like, you know, crazy disruptive uh, little powers. Um, just a really fun game to play multiplayer, up to four people. Great in, in just straight up verses, and uh, it has a good single player mode with a complete nonsense story too. Yeah. Just stay away it from should... the online if you don't want to get your butt kicked. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say it should be <laughs> People mentioned. People get really good. Yeah. It should be mentioned that Pear is very good at Puyo Puyo Tetris. But not, I, I mean, online, it's there. there's a whole different breed of people who, yeah. like, the people who didn't buy Mario and Zelda, that's all they're playing, man. This and is also good. this is also one of the best local multiplayer games on Switch. I think it totally exemplifies the kind of mission statement of what this system's out to do. Like two people sitting next to each other on a flight can play this with each other and fully understand what's going on. You don't feel like you're too far. Like Mario Kart, I think gets a little squished. Um, this this just looks gorgeous, this, and the, the music and sound is, is great too. This is the Karen party game. This is the yep, game that yeah, you can take to totally. any party. Everybody understands Tetris. It's so simple to play. You don't need to hear the audio. Like one two switch did not work as a party game because you can't hear anything. Right. Right. This yeah, one always point. works and works everywhere. This is why people call Karen. Yeah. And Tyler to come to the party. If you're looking for a fun switch game to play with like your family, your mom, or your dad, your mm -hmm. girlfriend, whatever, like this is it. Definitely. Yep. If so. you're looking for Karen. She's probably on the roof. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Brian, what's your pick? I think I put like five games on that list, didn't I? Always. You did. You did. Yeah. Uh, so one of the ones I wanted to give a shout out to, which I think does another great job of local multiplayer, is Death Squared. Mm. Um, that is a sort of like top-down puzzle game where uh, you each get a sort of 3D isometric cube, and you have to navigate around levels using like uh, cooperative sort of skills to stack on top of each other and push each other around and open up gates and doors to get to the end. And you die a lot and you get to customize your cube and it's like the kind of thing where most people would be like, this doesn't sound good, it doesn't look good, um, but it's the kind of thing where I totally latched onto it and really, really enjoyed it. Um, and there's a ton of stuff in there and it's pretty cheap. I also really like the game Wolverblade, which we talked mm -hmm. about on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. That's an awesome one. Um, sort of historical based side scrolling fighting game uh, kind of beat em up ish super violent and bloody i really dig it um, yeah I th slime's on great game you, you just patched uh, that floor kids you had on the list too floor right? kids is awesome it's a sort of it's like a mu it's a rhythm game where you don't really get punished for screwing up uh, music by kid koala like i really dig it yeah really nice. cool stuff Philip, i think that's floor kids everyone right choose one game brian here's four yeah <laughs> oh yeah you had yeah you had floor kids which we we're, we're seeing here really cool art style but you also i think uh, you uh, you had one on your list that I was going to pick that was uh, Blo um, Blossom Tales? Blossom Tales. Yeah, you had yeah. that that's on your the, list as well. Uh, that's the Link to the Past-esque. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, just look at Floor Kids. It is gorgeous. It's um, re It's got this sort of like freestyle mode to it. It probably has my favorite soundtrack of any game on Switch. Like mm. they're all yeah, just 90s it's a really good beats. soundtrack. Um, it's just dope. I just love it. It's nice. really cool. It reminds me of like living back in New York City and seeing this kind of stuff out in the wild. When you lived in New York City, did you also like have some cardboard and were you a floor kid? I did not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was more of a tag the walls kind of guy. Okay. But um, I had friends at Breakdance and you know you couldn't wait for a train for a while without seeing that kind of stuff down there. So mm -hmm. yeah, cool. It's cool. Yeah. Check it out. What about you, Zach? Uh, so I was actually kind of surprised to learn at how few people uh, actually got an opportunity to play this game. But uh, my, my choice is the, uh, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. A... Uh, no, actually, uh, <laughs> I chose, uh, I, my pick is Battle Chef Brigade. Nice. Uh, I think that Battle Chef Brigade is a 
very charming, uh, very unique, very small, sort of like goofy game. Improbable uh, game. Yeah, I mean, it's made yeah. by three people. It's this gorgeous hand-drawn art style, and it mixes this like blend of platforming and match three and puzzles and like I just really enjoyed it. Uh, I reviewed it for IGN and I was totally surprised by it. Like for a game that I assumed <clears throat> would be sort of a, um, uh, you know, pop in, play it and get an opinion of it. Like I spent a lot of time with Battleship Brigade, uh, even post review, so. If you, it's one of those games where if you write down the elements, like, you know, cooking, puzzle, adventure, all that, you can't, figure out what it's going to be like. Yeah. When you play it, you're like, oh, you hunt your ingredients, and then you do a puzzle right. game to cook the food. Like, it's it's such a weird setup, but it's incredibly fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's, like this, there's this sort of like underlying risk-reward kind of thing, too, because it, in the later stages, you can fight in the hunt sections, you can fight these giant monsters that will drop m more rare ingredients that make the cooking easier, but also takes a lot more time to beat, so you have less time to cook. And it's like, it's, it's sort of this like, you know, back and forth, like, well, do I hunt the big monster to get the best mm -hmm. ingredients, or do I hunt a lot of little monsters and make right. something elaborate? Yep. Like, it's a really cool game. Also, lots of Iron Chef references. Lots of yep. Iron Chef references, yeah. Yep. Lots nice. of cool characters, too. And, yep. Great character design and good and good writing. Nice, so, very yeah. cool. Well, my pick uh, is actually a newer game that came out not too long ago, uh, actually this week. Oh, minutes oh. ago. Yes, minutes ago, literally. Uh, my pick is Mulaka, uh, which is a game that I initially wasn't too sure about, but it quickly, really quickly actually grew on me. Um, so this is uh, made by an indie developer. It's actually one of the Nindy games. Uh, the developer is called Lienzo, and they're from the northern part of Mexico and actually Chihuahua, Mexico, hmm. which is really interesting. There aren't a lot of game developers making games for Switch hmm. over there. Um, so yeah, Mulaka is just, it's kind of a callback to older like double A games, like, uh, you know, from like, like, Jack and Dexter or something or like, like the that. THQ era. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like that. Yeah. So it's really fun. Um, it's a it's a little bit on the shorter side, but um, I think it's perfectly priced. It's like a twenty dollar game, um, and Look you get just a great experience out of it. The animations, I will say, are a little strange. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's a very it's a very cool game because it ties in um, like ancient legends and true true or uh, actual myths and stuff like that from a culture. Uh, called the Tamahara, uh, Tamaharama, or wow, I'm totally butchering that name, Tamaharama, I think. It's pronounced um, Garuk. Yes, it's pronounced Garuk, uh, but they're actually native people of Chihuahua, Mexico, and this game totally like tells their story, their legends, their myths. Um, it's very, very cool. It's got some fun boss battles in it. Oh, you can turn into a bird. Yeah, you can nice turn too. into animals and stuff like that. I definitely recommend checking this out. Um, it's a, totally a single-player game, has mm -hmm. a great story. Um, the combat is probably the weakest part of this yeah. game. Yeah. It's a little yeah. loose, right? Like I, I've, I haven't played that much of it yet, but it feels a little a little floaty, the, the control in, in combat. Exactly, yeah. Mm. But it's got some great exploration elements to it. Um, it's got some really interesting puzzles, too. Um, so definitely, if you're looking for a, a nice, short, quick game to get through and have a great time with, Mulaka is hands down the game you should pick up. So. Nice. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like the the fact that we some of us limited themselves to one game, but the, you you could you could pick about ten games that aren't talked about a lot, and I actually really really quality titles. Yeah, we should, titles. We should probably uh, do that list eventually. Yeah, so Philip, we'll, we'll Philip do that again. specifically forbade me to mention Steam World Dig Two. On this <laughs> well, that's list. too <laughs> common. I think yeah. it's, that's yeah, I think too known and obviously a must-have game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I feel like a lot of people picked that one up. Yeah. There you go. Oh, there it's it so is. good. I kind of feel. I want to erase my my memory and go back and, and play go again. back and play it. I'm playing the first one again. So Look, that's it, a little bit more distant. If you haven't played Steam World Dig Two yet, this is the day you should definitely pick yes. it up. Stop, it is, stop messing around. Yes, it is a fantastic game. If you like, give I, yourself a little birthday present. Yeah, yeah. You know? no matter what time of year it is, yeah. give, give yourself somebody else's birthday present. The Switch's yeah. birthday, birthday present, yeah. right? There For the go. price of two Happy Meals. I still maintain that this was a better Metroid game than the Metroid game that launched within the same two same. weeks of it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I think you're right. Well, we talked a little bit about uh, <laughs> the beginning of the Switch. We talked a little bit about how Nintendo marketed it and the games as well. But now I want to talk about the future and kind of our expectations or our hopes and what we think Nintendo needs to do to make the Switch just as successful in 2018 as it was in 2017. 
So I know that's a very, very big topic, mm. um, but two things that come straight to my mind uh, when I'm not thinking about games are that we definitely need the online, which is coming. We know it's yep. coming. We have that all set up. We just don't know exactly how it's going to be yet and what it's going to entail. So i um, curious about that, but I also really want to see more Joy-Con colors. I want more accessories for Switch. I want different styles of Joy-Cons. Like we talked for a long time about the possibility of GameCube style Joy-Con controllers, mm -hmm. you know, coming out when virtual console hits. I want stuff like that to kind of lead in or take us into the holiday of 2018. Well, great news, Philip. You're going to get something like that on 420 this year when you get to make a cardboard fishing rod. <gasps> Yay! <Yes. laughs> no, I, think, I think that's, that's going to be their big... Lo, Nintendo Labo, obviously, big next push for them. Wow, that was amazing. They just had the... the there was. Yeah. Um, and so for you. That's, that's awesome. I don't know if that's specifically for our age demographic, but I do think we'll see more Joy-Cons. Um, mm -hmm. They have to be seeing how much of a sort of customization community is happening around all that mm -hmm. uh, and, and wanting a piece of that as well. And, sure. Do you right. remember Wii Play, where it was yes, a collection yeah. of crap bundled with a controller? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm not hoping for that exact same thing, but I would love a Game Boy great, Greatest Classics with two classic kind of Game Boy oh looking Joy-Con. Yeah. Yeah. Like these kinds awesome. of bundles would be really awesome. You know, yeah, I think the idea like that, yeah. that you could create Joy, they'd be expensive, but the idea that you could create a Joy-Con that was literally just a GameCube controller split down the middle and clip it under your, mm -hmm. to have a different grip <laughs> and have that feel to play Maybe play those games. A little the yellow nipple console. Maybe right. play. Hey, don't say nipples. Smash if Smash comes this year. Who knows? I'd be with that. What are you doing over there? Is that a juggle? Is that this, a, this right here. The That's the balancing it's scales. Yeah, yeah. Time for Smash. Got it. Um, <laughs> no, I'm totally with you because I when I bought and I'm sure you feel that emptiness every time you buy another set of Joy Cons, but you're kind of like okay, <laughs> chasing that initial yeah. high. Yeah, so I <laughs> chasing that dragon. So you have this extra set, but you're kind of like. Okay, well that's good. I swapped these out, but now like I have the gray ones in a drawer somewhere, and I'm like, yeah, I can put these into another grip and make another controller out of it. But the idea of getting two Joy Cons that come with a game or a piece of software or even a download code for something, yeah. a virtual console or anything, would re it's, it's just a cool package, right? And Nintendo could just take some old key art from you know mid 2000s or something and put out some GameCube game, yeah. and there you go. Yeah, and it becomes the like. I, I'm super cheesy this way, but like playing Zelda with green Joy-Con, like it's just more fun for me. I don't yeah. know why. Um, oh, it's uh, it's because you're a big yeah, dork. Yeah, big <laughs> dork. I do have because I have uh, three of me at home. There's my three kids also have switches, so like whenever we we tr we switch. Uh, we switch off Joy-Con and like they'll be using like a somebody will be using a red set and then I'll steal them back and mm -hmm. um, so oh, they, oh, at least me, I, son I'm playing Mario I need to it, borrow these red Joy-Con right. <laughs> at yeah. least I get to see them like I, there's you know joint custody I get to see all the other Joy-Con <laughs> right. colors frequently whereas like uh -huh. you have to put them away in a drawer and you know yeah I, I think I think little sad. little touches like that are awesome for you know for their hardware line that's mm. going to be really important I ultimately it's about games this year and they have to keep yeah, that momentum Yeah I mean going that's, that's the thing that I was going to say is like I I I swapped my Joy-Con uh, colors like I just put a different case on them I don't care about accessories like I'm not right. I'm not super caught up in the customization as, as much as some You don't need the D-pad yeah, Joy-Con I, I don't you know what I mean like I, I I like the way that it feels I like the functionality is fine like what I need is games like yeah. I need the games to be there for 2018 right. yeah. so uh, you know we're slowly starting to get an idea of what that game plan looks like yeah. um, but we still have a lot of questions as to like when some of these bigger titles are coming and whether or not we'll see things like Metroid Prime 4, we won't, or uh, is there going to be an Animal Crossing this year? Or like yeah. what, you know, Pokemon. And Pokemon. And like yeah. we're not, like with Kirby, There's you know, those right now we're, <laughs> we're getting Kirby, so a, a, a mainline Nintendo character is coming to the platform, but the Yoshi whole ramp up so too? far this year has been pretty slow, right? Yeah. We're right. getting really cool indie titles and some, some good third party stuff, but it's for me like the the continued success hinges upon a big meaty Nintendo title like the next Smash Brothers, mm -hmm. something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Or if they can, I mean, if they could bring out Pokemon this year, that'd be freaking amazing. It'd be humongous, right? I mean, for yeah. me, it, it makes total sense to bring obviously Smash and Pokemon this year mm -hmm. because we are getting the online this year. Did I say Pokemon? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Like that's two <laughs> really, really big games. If, if I mean, Smash yeah. and if Smash and Pokemon come out before the end of 2018, I'll eat my shoe. Like, okay. Don't say that. Don't oh, say that. That's just, a bad. Uh, yeah. That's you said that. Smash yeah. or Pokemon by the and. end of the year. Smash and. shoe. <laughs> Smash Ladies and, and gentlemen, keep them honest. Both. Yeah. Smash and. What's your What's your Twitter handle? 
at Zacharias. Okay. <laughs> Tweet What's at him your, in November when we're playing shoe? Smash Brothers. Please. Not these ones. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Do you yeah, have like a, sand, like a sandal, something that's like low carb? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about this anymore. I really oh, but you were saying, you were saying really my foot in these games. <laughs> you were saying these games could demonstrate Nintendo's online plan, which mm. we know is launching this year. Right? Yes, like yeah. the, the yeah. online service. Yeah, yeah. So I think that obviously Smash would be an excellent game to launch with because yep. it is so online heavy. That community is growing, and we know that Nintendo has shown interest in growing it, especially mm -hmm. the competitive competitive community. Uh, yeah, so I, I think it's, it's weird because selfishly, I'm kind of happy with the way this year has gone so far, and that it's given me a lot of chance to. Uh, play more indies, which I love to do. Yeah. Um, we've also gotten, you know, Bayonetta, we got the Mario Dragon Odyssey Builders. DLC, oh, yeah. like, uh, so there's been some stuff, and you know, we've got Kirby and Lavo around the corner, but I don't I don't really know what the rest of the year looks Yoshi, like. probably in the fall. Yeah. yeah. It's pleasant stuff, but not like groundbreaking, mm -hmm. you know, like we all play Bayonetta before and they're really good games, but that's not what we're getting excited for, or people running out to buy a Switch for, presumably. I don't know, maybe I, there's some people who miss them, but. I think we. Uh, smashes it. Here we go. I think we also are sort of underestimating the importance of uh, virtual console. Oh, I think, absolutely. Or I think that whatever I think that, it will become. Yeah. I think that a lot of the people that bought, a lot of the people that I was talking about earlier that bought the the Switch because they love Super Mario sixty four because they love Sunshine as he sips his kombucha. Yep. Uh, I, I think that those are the kinds of folks that that will have been will be so excited to invest in the virtual console in yeah. a way that that. You know, it's like, oh, awesome! I have this, and I have Super Mario uh, Odyssey, and I have the entire Nintendo backlog, or I have yeah. selects yeah. from the Nintendo backlog for the last thirty it, years. It like, can, I think that it cannot be understated how yeah. how much of an easy win that is. Uh, if you look at something like the Wii, when they were like, "Hey, we have Super Mario sixty four, they eventized every single uh, virtual console drop, even trash like you know, Urban Champion and Ice Climbers, mm. that, Balloon Fight. See, I don't yeah. think they'll do I like that Balloon again. Fight. Mm -hmm. What's good? I don't think uh, I don't think they'll do oh, that. I think good. we'll see more stuff like uh, here's Dr. Mario online or something where they take <laughs> Classic Dr. Mario, and that becomes the, the lead game for the I month. I hope that that's the actual title of it. Here's Dr. Dr. Mario, Mario online. Web Everything MD. will be online just to drive home the point. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't agree with you guys that, that there's this huge audience clamoring for virtual console. Really? Like, you don't think that? You're I, into, no, no. Like people who own the system, I'm, not, I'm thinking of people like who haven't bought into the Switch ecosystem you're into yet. Deep. That's the thing. Like you're, you're, you play everything. You're like everybody I else. Have in a Super NES Classic. You're not you the kind of person that like so, a Super yeah, but there's, NT. but there's idiots like me that own a Super NES Classic, and have purchased Super Metroid on 3DS and have have the 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 cart yep. and I, from my Super Nintendo days, and I'm still gonna buy Super Metroid Hell on yeah. Switch because that's one of my favorite games of all time. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, Brian, how many times have you bought Mario Brothers? <sighs> Like twelve. Uh, are we right? counting 13? like the, the Mario Arcade that just launched? Because yeah. these I, guys are much Switch. more normal. It's than probably me. thirteen, twelve or thirteen at this point. I, oh, yeah, well. I, look, you're in too deep. They're really, <laughs> I, they're popular games. They're fun. People will be super happy. But that's not going to drive the excitement around Switch this year. I don't like, know. I, the, I, don't I feel know, like man. a tentpole big game is going to uh, drive the excitement. And by this the way, Sarah, if that, this, this system if, has attracted the same casual audience that, it, that that we did. So like, I think that the idea did you, that did you, you you guys saw the sales numbers on the Super NES Classic when it was readily available. Oh, that's true. Like and, that, and, was, that was up there with some of the biggest consoles of the month. I, I think it outsold I, the Xbox One. And yeah. I'll give you, Super Mario Arcade's been just in the top ten for like yeah. ever yeah. since yeah. it came out. And people so, don't even know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bought it. I was like, what the hell is this? I, uh, what I'm saying is like. I don't think there's somebody contemplating the purchase on the Switch who's saying, I'm going to wait till Super Mario World is on this thing. But I think when Smash Killer Brothers Rock. is on there and Pokemon is on there, they'll run to the store. I think sure. it, it, it all it all builds up towards a, that conversation, right? Like somebody who's okay. on the fence that a slowly pushes them yeah. off the fence. I don't yeah. know how the fence thing works, <laughs> where you land or what side of the fence. Over to the Nintendo side of the fence. Do you guys think there'll be an original well, new IP hell yeah. this year, like Splatoon or something? Um, okay. You know, it's it's hard to say. I mean, honestly, they tried with ARMS, and ARMS did okay. Um, yeah. I think it broke, like, top eight or something like that, sales for Switch. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I would sooner think that they would try an ARMS sequel than they would try just a brand new IP. Fighter or something. Right. Like that, yeah. um, I think you'll probably see, uh, like, 
the Project Robot Labo DLC work with ARMS in some way. I think, think that that's, so? there, that is going to be their Trojan, their cardboard Trojan horse for new IPs this year. It's basically them saying, like, we have a bunch of old things, and not just, like, motorcycle and fishing. I don't count those as IPs. Those are, You'll get those a are cherished old sports. <laughs> You'll get a helmet in spring. Yeah, but stuff like, you know, ideas that Miyamoto had kicking around for centuries will now materialize in cardboard form. Yep. So, in yeah, in cardboard form. Mm -hmm. Also, what if they just made a cardboard horse? That'd be good. Yeah. yeah. And we'll yeah. get a, stock, uh, a, a Star Fox R-Wing in cardboard. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would like to, to see... To poke in the eye. I would like to see more stuff that um, sort of got skipped around on Wii U. I, I know people are kind of tired of ports, but I, I mean, I really would love to play Wind Waker HD on a Switch this year. That yeah. and Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. Yeah, would yeah. Be like Captain Toad's obsessed. a good one. Captain Such Toad is so good, and five game. people played yep. it. Like, Such an easy win. I mean, even looking into the 3DS line, like there was rumors a couple months ago when Nintendo reached out looking for uh, press quotes on Link Between Worlds for 3DS. Right. We're all like, it's coming to Switch. Um, no. Uh, they put out a selects line of right. like classics that were cheaper on 3DS, which is great. Uh, but that got me thinking, like, yeah, I really do want a bunch of 3DS games on Switch. Uh, I want the resolution to be up to snuff, but, you know, I think yeah. there's something to work yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. cool. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for joining us for our one-year Switch anniversary special episode of NVC. Uh, we are a weekly show on IGN. We're on every Friday, so definitely make sure you subscribe and come back Friday for the full episode of NVC. And we're on every week, so definitely make sure you come back. Thank you very much, and we'll see you then. Gotta blow the thing. <laughs> I set it down to throw the balloon. <laughs>